Welcome to the Psych2Go review for Don and Sandra Hockenberry Psychology, Chapter 2, Neuroscience and Behavior. The chapter has five sections. Section 1 is called Introduction. Neuroscience and Behavior. The second section is called The Neuron, the Basic Unit of Communication. Let's start with some fundamentals. Nerve cells, or neurons, are the most basic units of communication in the human nervous system. Assisting neurons with structural support, nutrition, removal of cell wastes, and speed of communication by the manufacture of a fatty substance called myelin are glial cells. We have three kinds of neurons in our nervous system. Motor neurons control messages for muscles to contract or relax. Sensory neurons control sense experiences, for instance, smelling food or hearing music, by conveying information to the brain from specialized receptor cells in sense and internal organs. Interneurons communicate from one neuron to the next, an awesome responsibility considering that we each hold up to one trillion neurons. Any kind of neuron can have up to three basic components. The cell body contains the nucleus and provides energy for the neuron to carry out its functions. The dendrites, short branching fibers, extend out from the cell body and receive messages from other neurons or specialized cells. The axon, a single elongated tube, often surrounded by a myelin sheath, carries information from the neuron to the other cells in the body, including other neurons, glands, and muscles. A neuron can communicate electrically and chemically. Electrical communication occurs when brief electrical impulses, called action potentials, are produced by the movement of electrically charged particles, called ions, across the membrane of the axon. The resting potential is the state in which a neuron is prepared to activate and communicate its message if it receives sufficient stimulation. For an action potential to be produced, stimulation must be above the stimulus threshold, the minimum level of stimulation required to activate a particular neuron. And all of this happens in just one to two thousandths of a second. In addition, neurons either respond or they don't. This principle is referred to as the all-or-none law. Let's turn to communication at the space between neurons, called the synapse, where 99% or more of the communication occurs chemically. The synaptic gap is extremely narrow, with special ion channels serving as a bridge between neurons, which results in almost instantaneous communication. Chemical messengers called neurotransmitters are released from synaptic vesicles housed in a neuron's axon terminals, diffused across the synapse, hence affecting adjoining neurons. The process of communication between neurons is called synaptic transmission. After the neurotransmitter molecules attach to the receptor sites, they detach and are reabsorbed by the presynaptic neuron so they can be recycled and used again, a process called reuptake. For a moment, I'd like you to consider the awesome power of neurotransmitters, since these messengers participate in many behaviors and mental processes. Endorphins affect perception of pain. Acetylcholine affects intellectual functioning, memory, and learning. Dopamine affects various muscle functions, learning, and pleasure. Serotonin affects sleep, moods, and emotional states. Norepinephrine affects neural activation, memory, retrieval, learning, and physical arousal, and GABA inhibits brain activity. Many drugs affect brain activity by interfering with neurotransmitter functioning at the synapse. For example, drugs for depression may affect a person's serotonin levels.